Geekcom has a 2025 refresh for their A5 mini PC that should offer similar performance for around the same price as two of these guys. Let's find out. In the box, we get a mini PC off to a good start, a power brick, HDMI cable, and a monitor mount that's stout. And you're going to need it since the A5 comes in at 652 grams or 1.4 freedom units. Inside, we get a Ryzen 5 7430U with Vega 7 graphics, 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3200, and 512 gigs of NVMe storage. On the front, two USB 3 Type A's, a noise hole, and a power button. And it's got a good click to it and no rattle. On the back, dual HDMI, dual Type C, another USB 3, and a 2, 2.5 gigabit Ether Noodle, plus a barrel jack for those electrons. We also get a Kensington lock and an SD reader writer that could come in handy. Did I mention the marketing material includes not one, but two Linuxes, Ubuntu and Mint. So you know what that means. We're installing Fedora. Let's go. Let's hammer on that delete key and take a peek at the BIOS. We get system info, security, and a couple of boot options. Let's give it a reset, pop in a Fedora flash drive, and go to town on F7. We're going to select Fedora from the menu and click our way through that installer, then restart the system. And we don't need no stinking tour, but we do need to press the Windows key and make it do this a couple of times because I'm an adult. A quick peek at resolutions, show support for real 4K, fake 4K, and all the way down to 720 by 576. And I do want to take the USB-C hole in the back for a spin with this portable monitor. And it popped right up. Nice. Wi-Fi is showing the 2.4 and 5 gig access points in the studio and they connected right out of the box. Now how about that 2.5 gigabit ether noodle? It's slinging about 2.35 according to iPerf and when we send and receive data bits at the same time we get around 2.2 in and 2.2 out. That's a win. Audio comes in two flavors, HDMI and the 3.5 millimeter noise hole up front. And there's an internal microphone so you can lean down and say, hello, computer. Bluetooth works and by works I mean it picks up my PS4 controller and all the buttons work when I gesticulate upon them. So we're going to call that a win as well. A quick run of KDiskMark is showing 1.4 and 1.8 for the sustained reads and writes, along with 52 and 122 for the random 4Ks, and that's perfectly in line for a Gen 3 NVMe. Now it's time to make the CPU go burr. Let's load up one core to 100% and that's pushing two threads at 4.3-ish gigahertz. That's not too bad. Loading up all six cores gives us 3 gigahertz across 12 threads, and that's definitely a bit of all right. As long as it doesn't get too shouty. And it doesn't. At idle, the front LED is the only way you know this thing's on. Under load, you can only hear the A5 if you lean in and squint a little. I'm genuinely impressed by whatever they did with the cooling. The A5's power usage is good for x86. At idle, it's sucking around 3.5 watts, and that jumps up to 27 watts when you dial everything up to 11. I still want to know how this became a metric, but 4K YouTube playback doesn't tax the A5 once you enable hardware acceleration. Playback is smooth, minus the occasional dropped frame, nothing you're going to write home about. Same goes for 1080p playback and 4K hippitus hoppitus using the MPV video player. You gotta run Geekbench when the company is called Geekcom. Deal with it. The A5 scores 1920 for single core and 6545 on multi compared to the 2155 and 8739 of the 5600G. Now it's time to torture the GPU bits with everyone's favorite furry donut, and the 7430U is holding its own against the 5600G, delivering 24 FPS compared to the 29 from the 5600G. Bit more of a gap with superposition, the 7430U manages 46.4 compared to the 57.8 from the 5600G. Both of these chips fall into the better than nothing category when it comes to 3D. It's not like you're going to game on them, right? 
Here we are in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with everything dialed down to 720p fugly. The 7430U manages a Steam Deck approved consistent 40 FPS, and the in game benchmark is showing an average of 50 FPS compared to the 47 from the 5600G. You go, little buddy. And in what can only be described as a misapplication of morbid curiosity, here's Cybertruck running at 720p fugly with FSR3 and frame gen. It's wobbly, it's wonky. And the input delay is real, but it's holding 40. Twisted science experiment, maybe, but it's still cool. With gimmicks disabled, the in-game benchmark is showing an average of 24.7 FPS compared to the 39 from the 5600G. And yes, yes it can. At 720p, the A5 plays Crisis surprisingly well, spending more time in the 50s than the 40s. But at the end of the day, it does play hollow bug at 120 plus frames per second, so all can be forgiven. If we unscrew the feet and give them a tug, the bottom pops right off. But I do want you to be mindful of this ribbon cable. We have easy access to the 2280 NVMe and two 8 gigabyte memory modules, both from Wadposit. Wad? Wadposit? Nope, haven't heard of them either. And that looks like a 2242, if you have one of those laying around. And you might have missed it, that ribbon cable leads to a SATA connector. That can be a wee tricky to line up, and requires some extra gusto to remove. Four years later, and this critter still offers incredible price performance if you're building a home theater or general purpose PC. Fight me, but you're going to need a motherboard, cooler, storage, RAM, and power supply. And I'm just going to pretend that you got a case laying around because you're already looking at $300 plus dollars if you get lucky and catch a deal. $279. Plug it in, put some Linux on it, and you're good to go. 16 gigs of memory, half a terabyte of NVMe storage, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, multiple display outputs, and 2.5 gig Ethernet. And it sips power. And unless you're rendering a video, it's dead silent. But the CPU is a 7430U, so you're not going to want to edit video or get into any real serious gaming considering it's Steam Deck-ish performance. My only complaints are the plastic shell. It's ABS. It's solid and it feels good, but it's still plastic. So when, not if, you accidentally drop it, you'll end up with a crack instead of a dent. And I think people would have really liked to see another ether hole in the back. Maybe next time. And I say next time since hopefully this won't be the last Geekcom PC I poke with a Linux stick, especially since their Snapdragon powered QS1 is slated to be released later this year. But be sure to check out the full write up on the interfacing Linux web zone and let me know what you think down in the comments. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome.